OK, let's look at how to use soft proofing in photo. So soft proofing is accessed through an adjustment layer, specifically the soft proof adjustment. Now, because it's an adjustment layer, we want to make sure it's always at the top of the layer stack. So I'm going to select the topmost layer here and then go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Soft Proof Adjustment. OK, so we have a number of profiles here to choose from for soft proofing. I'm going to use a paper profile that's specific to the Canon PIXMA printer that I'm going to print from. So I'm going to select that profile. And as you can see, there's a slight tonal shift here. So we'll just talk quickly about the rendering intent. The rendering intent basically determines how the colors and tones are mapped from the source color space, in this case sRGB, to the given profile's color space. So absolute colorimetric, which is chosen by default, is the best match typically for color accuracy, as neither the white point or black point are altered. Relative color metric will convert colors that are out of gamut to the nearest possible colors that are within the given profile's gamut. Saturation aims to retain the brightness and saturation of colors as much as possible. And perceptual will compress the source profile's color gamut to the proof profile's gamut. And depending on the range of values within the image, we may find results are similar to saturation. So then, I'm going to put this back to absolute colorimetric for now, and we're now going to look at how to do gamut checking. So if I just enable gamut check here, you'll see various tones in the image go a solid gray. Now these are tones that are going to be hard for the printer to reproduce, as they're not within the gamut of the profile. So what we can do then is compensate accordingly. So I'll just go ahead and close the soft proof dialog for now. And then I want to select the pixel layer underneath it. And I'm going to go ahead and add a curves adjustment. And what I will do is drag the bottom node up here. And gradually, you'll see that we're starting to bring all of those tones within gamut. We can then, of course, try and add a bit of punch back to the image by adding additional nodes to the spline graph here. But we can still see some areas, especially the saturated reds here, that are currently out of gamut. So as well as a curves adjustment, we can also add an HSL adjustment. And if we just start to reduce the saturation slightly, you'll see it doesn't take much before we've now brought those tones within gamut. Additionally, rather than use the master option here, we can change to reds and just bring those down slightly. And also we've got, if we just see here, some yellow tones that are out of gamut. So we'll switch across to yellow and just reduce the saturation on those as well. OK, so basically, through these two adjustments, we've now compensated for the limited color gamut of that profile. If I just go ahead and hide these, you'll see that initially all of these tones were going to be out of gamut. So now that we've done all this proofing and we're ready to send our work to print, there's one crucial thing left to do, and that is to disable the soft proof adjustment. As it's an adjustment, it does affect the final rendering of the document. So just remember to turn it off before you export your image or send it for print. And I'll just bookend this video by saying, of course, you can also use the soft proof adjustment in a creative sense. So if I just access the soft proof dialog again and uncheck gamut check, let's move up to another profile. For example, one of the coated Fogra profiles. And because it is an adjustment and therefore affects the document's output, it means we can also experiment with using it in a creative sense. So I hope that was useful. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums. And don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.